Today I'm looking at a Kenwood TW4000A ham radio transceiver. This is a dual band radio, 2 meter and 440, and uh, probably 25 years old, maybe, maybe more. The first thing that I did with the Kenwood was to remove the covers, top and bottom. Uh, there's just a few screws to take off and the covers pop off. The next thing that I'm going to look at on the Kenwood is the S-meter display driver chip and I believe that's located on the circuit board that is behind the front panel and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to zoom in or show that real well until it's disassembled but it's uh, it's kind of back here on that vertical board behind this white connector here and I think it's a 22 pin device uh, that's available from RF parts if uh, if I need to order and replace that but before I do that I'm going to take the take the front panel off and see if I can see any signs of uh, deterioration I've got the front panel loose on my Kenwood and in order to get this apart I first had to remove the two side rails which are just plastic and those are held on with three screws on each side just these countersink type screws and then also on each side there are these two uh, screws inside these pieces of hardware that kind of mount to the uh, the mounting bracket um, so once all those were out the plastic side came off and then that revealed one more screw that held on or held the side to the front panel uh, bracket and once those two screws were out on either side this was loose <clears throat> you can see now what's holding it on are all the uh, the different wired connections and uh, before I disconnect any of these I'm going to take a permanent marker, a fine tip marker and mark each connector so that I can keep track of which plug goes in which receptacle some of them are on the, the display board and some of them are on the main board um, I'm not sure if they're all keyed or all different sizes but I'm going to mark them just to be sure and then uh, then this should come the rest of the way off I've got most of these wires disconnected. Um, they don't all disconnect. Some of them go in here and solder in. But the ones that mount to this central display board I believe are all removed. And the next thing I'm going to try and do is there are four screws on a board that's below this board. I don't know if you can see it in the uh, camera here or not, but there's a second board below here. It looks like it's mounted with some sort of ribbon cable and there's four screws in the corner kind of buried down behind everything so I'm going to remove those and see if this will come out and just for uh, precautions I've removed the knobs here as well although probably didn't need to do that I've managed to get the display assembly out of the radio uh, just by taking out those four screws and kind of gently prying some wires out of the way I've got the control board out and apart and uh, it was just a matter of removing these two screws here and the two end screws on the plastic piece to free up these soldered on clips the one in the middle needs to stay because there's a soldered on clip on that board and removing that one will cause the plastic piece to become loose and the LCD will you know fall out and get disconnected and I don't really want to do that at the moment so the next thing I was going to look at was the IC driver for the uh, S meter and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to zoom in on this well enough to show it but there's a few pins here uh, on the lower left corner as I have it oriented that have some corrosion you may be able to see it there with the light there's like a little bit of a bluish green corrosion on the after thinking about this for a few minutes I realized that the corrosion that was on these pins was caused from a leaky capacitor, the one that was mounted here next to these pins, next to this IC. So I desoldered the, the capacitor. You can see all the electrolyte kind of on the bottom that's leaked out. And I've cleaned this up somewhat. I've used contact cleaner and some isopropyl alcohol to uh, clean the corrosion off. And then the, uh, the two pads here where the capacitor was mounted were really quite badly corroded. So I tried to scrape them with an X-Acto knife. And when I did, most of the pad on this side flaked away and a good part of it here kind of flaked away. Um, so what I'm going to do now is before I replace this with a new capacitor I'm going to uh, try and rebuild these leads 
or come up with some way to um, make a lead that I can put on the new capacitor and uh, scrape away a little bit of solder mask and solder that down. Just have to be careful of these surface mount parts that I don't end up uh, flicking these off the board without realizing it. And then what I also think I'll do is replace these other couple of capacitors on here while I've got the thing apart. It's been a couple of weeks since I looked at the Kenwood, um, but I'm getting back into it now. I was digging around in my junk box and I don't have... I, do, I have one exact replacement uh, 47 microfarad capacitor. Uh, this is happens to be a 25 volt cap. Um, same size as the one that came out. I think the old one was a yeah. This is a 16 volt. So this will this will be fine. Um, but the only other cap I had of this size was a 33 microfarad cap, 16 volt. So this may work uh, okay. I think these are just bypass capacitors. Um, so this this ought to work okay. So I'm going to actually put this one, the 33 microfarad, in place of the leaky one, and then I'm going to replace this cap with the 47 microfarad cap, and I've got one 4.7 microfarad cap here uh, with this case size. Here I'm showing the original uh, 47 microfarad cap that was bad that I replaced with a 33 microfarad cap. And I'm not sure how visible it is here in the camera. But in order to repair it, what I did was I soldered some kind of pigtails onto the leads of the capacitor that were kind of flying out horizontally. And I've soldered those to the traces on the board. I scraped back a little bit of the solder mask and then was able to kind of tack those down. So there's a tack there, a tack there, and then there should be one down here as well. Not sure how visible it is. And then when I was looking at the board here where the 4.7 microfarad cap was, I noticed that the, uh, the traces had been etched away here as well. So I went ahead on the 47 microfarad cap and made another flying lead set up here and again I'm not sure how well this is going to focus but you can kind of see the the leads on the cap there the the standard leads and I took a couple of other clipped leads bent them around and then soldered them on there not real pretty but it should be effective so now I'll just drop this back into place and solder the the flying leads to the the sections of trace that I exposed by scraping away a little bit of the solder mask with this knife. So I'll solder those first on the top and then I'll flip it over and solder the bottom uh, like normal. Here's the board with all three of the capacitors uh, soldered in place. Uh, these two have the, the flying leads on them and this one was in a little bit better shape so I was able to just solder that normally. Um, so I guess now what I'll do is uh, reattach this battery wire uh, to this solder pad and then start uh, trying to put this thing back together. Before I reinsert the display assembly in here, I, I remembered that one of the standoffs here had broken. It's molded into the front panel plastic and it had snapped off for some reason. So I've glued that back on. Uh, I put the screw in there that just helped me hold it in. I'll take that out. Okay, so I'm going to try and reinstall the display assembly here. Things are a little tight with all the wires and stuff, but should be able to jimmy this thing in. Yeah, I guess that's sort of lined up. I'm not sure that that standoff I glued in is completely square, but at least it's there holding the board. I might not be able to put a screw in it anymore, but but at least it's there to support the board when the other screws are in place. Here's the display board in place and you can see the screw holes here and this is the standoff over here that wasn't lined up. I'm not sure if that's showing up in the camera or not but 
you can kind of see it's off center so I don't think I'm going to be able to get the screw in there anymore but again as long as that's hold uh, you know holding the board from going forward the other screws ought to hold it in and then one thing I forgot to do before I put this in was to um, put the two screws in here that were holding the this board to the other board so I'll put all these screws in and then start working on reattaching these Okay, I've got all the wires reconnected to the front panel, except for the one for the memory battery. I'll leave that until last. And, uh, of course, I need to fix this one, too, as well, while I've got this apart. And uh, now I'll just screw this back together, get the faceplate mounted up, and screw that back in. Okay, so while I was at it here, I also uh, fixed this wire that had broken off of this connector. And I was able to just kind of quickly tack some solder in here. Um, you know, kind of a messy little hack job here, but I think it'll be functional. And this wire actually connects to the module, the voice module uh, reset switch, or uh, I'm sorry, on-off switch, little board that's on the, the case here. Um, I noticed when I first got the radio, I couldn't shut off the voice. It was kind of stuck on, and it's probably because that wire was broken. So hopefully now that'll work. Okay, so I've got the radio powered back up here. And I just have the dummy load on. I didn't bother to get the antenna. And even with the squelch off, there's no signal. But if I key the radio here into the dummy load, you can see that the signal meter is now functioning. If I change that over to low power, you can see that it's only, uh, only going up half scale. So that particular part of the repair seems to have worked okay.